Yo, what up, internet? Went over this in the last video. I hate doing intros. Hashtag no intro game. So we're basically gonna get right to it. I got two things I'm gonna tell you first. Two things. Uh, a, today we are going to be working on the center console. So last episode we kind of designed it in cardboard and today we're starting to build it. So yeah, that's that's number one. And number two, we do have a partnership for today's video, which is Hone. I wanna say thank you for partnering with today's video. Partnership's not going on now. It's gonna go a little bit later in the video. Advertisement's done easy on this channel. Everyone loves it. You love it, your mom loves it, your dad loves it, except your sister, your sister doesn't love it because she's a bitch and she stole your toy cars when you were seven years old and we don't like talking to her anymore, all right? All right. That's how I roll, all right? You got beef with somebody, I got beef with somebody. So other than that, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. Oh yeah, I'm also recording the intro at like the end of the video, so this isn't where we're starting. You didn't miss anything. I'm really bad at like the whole congruity thing of like movie making and video making and stuff like that, but these are all just YouTube videos, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, done with the intro, let's go. So first things first here, I'm gonna take our cardboard template, trace it out onto a piece of plywood, and then cut it out. This is gonna be a pretty rough cut with no design involved, and it's strictly just to get our shape started. By using some clamps and a flush trim bit on my router, I'm basically gonna router around the entire shape of my previous design, and the little bearing on the flush trim bit will ensure that I copy the piece exactly how it is. I've got two perfectly cut pieces. Now after test fitting it a little bit more, I realized the bottom could fit a little bit better, and this whole process is gonna be done in stages. Test fit, cut. Test fit, cut.
And then once I find the proper shape for everything, I use the flush trim router bit again to copy the piece. Alright, so now for fitting purposes, I've cut these small pieces of wood that I'm going to use as temporary supports to go in between, just to get an idea of how wide it needs to be on the inside. These aren't permanent, and the final product will look a lot better and be way more efficient. Alright, so, let's get up in here. Ay -ay -ay. So. Don't mind these centerpieces. I'm sure I said something about them in the voiceover, but uh, do not mind these centerpieces here. They're strictly to help me figure out the dimensions of supports, uh, how far I can run the center console in between either wall and still fit everything I need to. Um, and this is our first test. And this is our uh, first test fit. And I gotta say, even I continue to amaze myself. Before I boast, before I brag, I'll show you. So again. First test fit. We're gonna be running. Let's see. How we look in here? We probably need to recenter it a little bit to the right. Yeah, that's that's perfect. That's perfectly centered. We still have enough room to create a gap between the seat. And and also, don't worry about the entire height of this center console. I cut it with a lot of extra measurements, um, just in case that it was it, rather than cutting it too small uh, and then having to cut a new piece of wood. I'd rather cut too big and trim it down, that's what I've done. The height right now is the maximum height that I would like to run with the lid on, and there's no lid on it right now, so we're gonna have to cut and trim some more, but right now we're just dimension fitting. And I gotta say, do it, do it, Dan, never freaking ceases to amaze. Look at this fitment right here, look at this, look at this, and we have a lot of feathering going on because the bit, you know, and this is plywood, so once we trim it all up, and it's also gonna be wrapped in leather, so that won't really matter, but, it flows the bumping of the carpet and body lines all the way up perfectly. Oh, oh Dan. Oh, do it with Dan. I did leave a little bit of a gap here because because once the like the, the padding is applied, like the leather padding and whatnot, there's gonna be just, your tolerances are gonna be a little bit less than what they are now. But I think this is exactly how we start it right here. Yeah, I'm very happy with that, that placement, the location of everything. So. This is about where the lid's gonna sit, maybe a little bit lower than this, uh, once we get everything all up in here. But and it's probably only gonna come to about right here. I gotta leave the rest of this space forward for cup holders and, and forward stuff to put in here. Um, but the lid's gonna come up. Yeah, you guys get a pretty good idea of what's going on here, I feel like. So now my next steps. Uh, the reason why we're, we're test fitting it, we know that 13 inches in width is great because we can still fit our mini refrigerator inside. The reason I did this is so I could kind of get an idea of where the floor, uh, where the floor of the center console is gonna be. Looks like we got some mounting brackets, we got a cover and there's some wiring crap that goes down here. Uh, and then we also have this Bose audio system that I uh, is causing me all sorts of issues with. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is basically just take my marker and, and Sharpie where our, uh, our not movables are gonna be. So like the shape of the bow system and the actual shape of the floor on the inside. That is gonna give us our depth in the center console. And uh, we're also gonna be able to put this little mini refrigerator in there, which is, which is great. And remember, I am dividing this whole thing into two pieces, the front and the rear one. The rear is gonna have a different flow but it's gonna also be integrated into it. I just really wanted to have the center console into two pieces, specifically in case if I ever had to remove it, which I'm sure I will. You know, something could happen, I, I wanna remove the center console. Um, if I was smart, I would make it where it was modular so you could remove the middle center console depending on things, but I don't think I'm gonna think that hard into it right now. I think I just wanna build a really awesome double center console. So I built it longer than it needed to be. I think I'll end up probably cutting it and curving it. I think I wanna do like a forward sweeping curving motion and that will lead into the second piece, if that makes any sense. But yeah, this is a uh, great start, great start. Now I'm gonna start doing the thing that I've been really kind of like reluctant to do, which is the designing process. No matter how many times that I drew it out, I just could never get the way I wanted it to look in my head down. So since it's in here, I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna kind of just design it the way I think I might want it to look. 
Yeah. And I'll, I'll be using a mixture of uh, MDF and more plywood to like help with the designs, mostly, mostly MDF for the designing process, but yeah. I didn't want to make the whole thing out of MDF because MDF is heavy as shit. And I have like inch thick MDF, so. All right, so now it's time to disassemble it and do some more trimming. Okay, so one of the things that I found very hard for myself was getting 100% straight cuts with a jigsaw. So I experimented with a couple of different methods in order to get the sharp, crisp, and straight lines that I was looking for. And one of the methods was using one of these vibration Milwaukee tools. Now, I'm not saying Milwaukee's the best. There's a bunch of different companies who make things out there. Milwaukee's just what I have now. All my batteries match up. It's kind of convenient. They don't pay me any money, even though I think they should. Anyway, I just used a straight piece of wood as a guide or a fence to rest the blade up against. And that actually netted me some very straight cuts. I was very surprised that it worked out as well as it did. All right, here we go. Now that I have this hollow handle design idea that I'm going with, it's time to duplicate that onto the driver's side. So I'm gonna get my rough cuts with a jigsaw and then I'm gonna transfer over to my router table. And I do use the drill to drill some holes to get my jigsaw blade in. You can straight hammer down from the top if you want to without drilling the holes, but I've just always found that this is much cleaner. All right, now we're moving on to the MDF. I'm gonna be using the MDF as almost like a third dimensional way of designing everything. It's gonna give it some depth, and after I chamfer the edges, it'll really give it that nice clean look that all these other custom center consoles have. A lot of people use MDF to make the entirety of the center console, which is fine. It works great for subwoofer boxes, so why shouldn't it work good for center consoles? The problem is that MDF is so incredibly heavy, and I'm just one man, and I also hate working with MDF, so I'm gonna keep its use to a minimum, but it is undeniably one of the best materials you can use to, to shape or design things like this. And it's incredibly easy 
easy to work with. It's just incredibly messy and it's not great for your lungs. So always wear a respirator when working with MDF. Now it's for the moment of truth. It's time for me to use the router table setup that I built in the last video. First things first, I'm extremely terrified of this thing in the best way possible, in the same way I am with my table saw. I have to treat it with an utmost sense of respect because in all actuality, this thing is a metal bit with blades on it, spinning at about 7,000 RPM, just sitting out of a table like that, exposed, no safety nets, nothing. So anyway, I was really struggling to get perfectly straight cuts on the inside of this without using a jigsaw or a skill saw. It just didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I had this idea to take some wood and use that as a fence and drilling it into the actual material itself. And then again, using the flush trim router bit was able to create perfectly straight lines as long as I went nice and slow and didn't get too excited. And again, I've never seen anybody do this, but I don't watch that much woodworking videos. It's just what I ended up doing. And I gotta say it works really well. If you have any better suggestions, please feel free to leave them below. Hello there, weary traveler. You've seen a lot of woodcutting in the past couple of minutes. Fret not. 
We're gonna take a break and talk about today's sponsorship. Now, it's not very often that I get to start a sponsorship by telling you guys that I'm not a medical professional, but here we are. We are gonna talk about today's partnership, which is Hone. Hone is here to help you optimize your natural hormone levels. Now, after 30, a man's natural hormone levels drops between one and 2% per year. Hone works with actual licensed physicians, real science, and FDA approved treatments. Hormones control a lot of the stuff. Hormone optimization can lead to an increase in muscle mass, decreased body fat, improved focus, a healthier sex life with your mom. Not you, that would be weird, just, just everyone else. Stabilized mood and help with stress management. I, I had no idea that hormones had so much to do with the human body. And the best way to know if you have a hormone issue is to get tested. And Hone allows you to do that from the comfort of your own house. You don't have to make any awkward trip to the doctor or even ask your friends any weird questions. You know what I'm saying? That kind of comfort is hard to come by. And Hone also offers 24 seven customer service. So they're always just a few clicks away to answer any questions you guys might have. And one of the things that I think is pretty important about this thing, it's not a set it and forget it plan. It's not like, you know, you're just gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again. You and Hone actively work together to make sure that your body balance is exactly where it needs to be at all times, you know? Yo, and don't forget, you can go to my description and click the link. That way you can get more information, see if this is right for you, and you get a discount off your order. You can use Hone's easy to use at home assessment and take control of your body's natural hormone balance today. And now it's time to get back and do work. Man, this is this is going to turn out quite nicely. I was really not sure about it till I put it in here, but uh, I think I think this floating handle grip on either side is going to work really well. I think I'm going to do just a little bar up here for switches, and then a, a catch here for keys and just general garbage to sit in here, and then uh, cup holders, and then we'll do lid. 
but I think this is this is gonna be great have to line this back up there we go all right here is looking like a solid place to stop for the evening uh, or for this video because um, I have the general construction of it you know finally I've, I'm now starting to do the designing with the uh, MDF and um, Right now I also do, I have these screws in here. I'm sure the editing version of myself has talked about it by now, but these screws are just holding this whole thing in together temporarily because I'm gonna do something that nobody else ever does with these kind of builds. Everyone always just screws them together. Okay, you gotta screw them together to build them. Then you gotta pull them back apart to do the upholstery and then you gotta screw them back together again. By the time you're done with it, you know, you're, you're talking about building something and taking it apart maybe like 10 to 15 times. At least that's the process that I've been doing. And you know, these really nice strength screws and whatnot that I've been using on the ambulance and whatnot, they are, uh, they're great. They're gonna do their job very well and they're gonna hold this thing together nice and strong. But because I'm gonna be taking this thing apart uh, here and there to get it all packed together and it's not gonna be going in as one center console, it'll be going in as two pieces. I want the whole center console to be able to be broken down over and over and over again like it's gonna be removed a million times just because that's how I am. So how am I gonna accomplish that, Dan? There's a ton of different ways. Part of what I did was I went to Home Depot and I got a bunch of wood anchors and uh, like, wood, uh, like wood mounting stuff so you can run metal coarse threads through the wood but it'll also be like regularly threaded. It's hard to explain, um, but you guys will see that in the next video. Essentially, it's like a metal insert, kind of close to one of these rib nuts, except just a little bit different design for wood. Uh, and the outside is threaded as well so you can screw it into the wood and then you can still use the threads for the actual screw. So that way you're not wearing down the wood over and over and over again. That is something that's important to me. It's how I build stuff. Let's say that I sell this truck in a couple of years, right? Once if someone wants to break apart the center console and they're, they're gonna get to the screws and be like, oh fuck, this, is, this sucks, right? Versus if I make the whole thing where you can break it down, they're gonna be like, man, that's high quality shit. And that's what I like to do. I like high quality shit. I like being able to make high quality shit. So yeah, that's gonna be in the next steps. We got some pieces that need to dry that are glued together. I do have to say overall with uh, my, my routing table or my table router setup that I built, uh, I love it. This is fantastic. I was able to duplicate pieces in like a minute, it, which I think is incredibly important for a build like this. And also uh, while I was filming this with my camera camera, it fell backwards onto, uh, onto these really nice sharp bits here you know, with all these nice sharp blades and whatnot on them. Crack the screen here. Thankfully, it's still usable. Honestly, when it's on, you almost can't even tell that it's uh, it's crackery node. So I might just throw some, some saran wrap or tape over that and call it good. I say that because I got a bunch of glass in my hand when I tried to use it earlier, but hey. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you guys. Um, I bought these. These are 11.6 inch displays. They're very small and lightweight, but I bought two of them. There we go. Just like that. And like I said, I got two of them. I'm gonna connect via HDMI cable uh, together so they can mirror each other, they can play their own independent thing. When I get that plasma cutting table all up and running, I'll build me a bracket and that's just gonna sit right back there on the back of that headrest. So the idea is I'm gonna have two monitors in the rear that are gonna be connected to each other that both the passengers can watch the same movie or play the same game, whatnot, because I'm gonna be running a mini computer. Instead of running like a console or a PlayStation or something like that, like I talked about, I'm gonna be running a miniature computer that'll run emulations on every game between like PlayStation 2 and older. And it'll probably run some modern games, you know, some like, like indie games and stuff like that. But I'm really, I'm trying to think like, you're on a road trip, right? You're not trying to complete Halo 3. Like I don't really wanna play Modern Warfare in the back of my truck but like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, that's some shit I could get lost in for a couple hours. And uh, thankfully, Stinger is gonna send me out one of their sweet heads-up displays. Uh, I'll be returning the other one that I couldn't get to work. Um, they have a co really cool heads-up display that I can mirror as well. So I can run three separate monitors that are all gonna be connected uh, that the driver can use and both the passengers can use at the exact same freaking time. So if we all wanna watch a movie in the truck together, we can. It's gonna be really neat. It's gonna be absolutely brilliant, I think. All right, now it's time for me to do the outro, which is funny because technically I just got done recording the intro. Funny how editing works, am I right? You have no idea when this video took place or who I am or where you're at right now, but we are leaving off today with a pretty solid foundation to build the rest of our center console. I, I want to point out, and I don't know if, if editing version of me has done any sort of justice on this, but uh, one thing that I've noticed about all these center console videos or dashboard videos or like anytime someone uses wood to create something that goes into a car, like two thirds of the video, it spends its time looking like shit. 
right? And that's because everything's pretty much like super unfinished. We have to like design it and then we have to build it and then we have to design it some more and then we have to build it some more. And then we'll chamfer the edges and we'll clean everything up with like super low quality grit sandpaper and then everything will be vinyl wrapped. And once it's put together in the proper stages, this thing is gonna look so freaking sweet, dude. I just have this feeling about it. But I also wanna say thank you guys for watching. This is something I've been like super nervous about tackling, but I think, I think we're on a pretty good start. I think, I think we're on the right track here. And I appreciate you guys wanting to watch and uh, support and be a part of it and whatnot. And uh, bah, bah, bah. I think that's it. I think I think we're getting really good at ending the videos here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna walk away from the camera. Um, just just gonna start backing up and uh, just gonna keep kind of talking until I feel like you guys are no longer gonna want to watch it because there's like a certain point right where like things are funny even after they're not funny, you know, like, haha, something went from being so stupid to like funny and then back to stupid again. And now we're full fuck back to funny. So what is it like third, third circle around? I don't even know if the camera can pick up the audio. Just, just gonna keep walking around and talking shit. Ah, 